Okay, let's begin. So, welcome to this HESCI webinar to launch a new and exciting set of local profiles data. My name is Lizzie Reynolds, and I'm a Higher Education Policy Advisor in the Institutions Directorate at HESCI, and I'll be presenting today alongside two colleagues. Good morning, everyone. My name's Kevin Richards, and I'm Local Growth Expert Advisor at HESCI, and some of you may <laughs> recognize me from uh, uh, the webinars we've done with Universities UK on the ESIF program. I'm Sam Wright and I'm a data analyst at HEFKI. I just wanted to start today by saying a big thank you to GIF for assisting us with the technology side of things today. Uh, a few bits of housekeeping too before we proceed. For the tweeters amongst you, we have a hashtag for today, which is hashtag HE Local Growth, and you can hopefully see that at the top of the slide. I can see, looking in the participants window, that we've got a really good turnout. So if you haven't done already, please let us know who you are and where you're from by typing into the chat window. You can ask a question at any time during the session, once again using the chat window function. We're going to try and address as many questions as we can at the end of the webinar, but we will also feed back all answers to questions in a follow-up email after the webinar. So, the data set that we're launching today provides a wide set of statistics from across the English higher education landscape. It complements the cold spots data launched in October. Together, they can be used to create a powerful evidence base to demonstrate the significant role university education has in the local economy. During the course of today, we will explore how you can use these data sets and address some of the questions that may arise from it. We're going to take a look at the local profiles data and what it is showing us, and take a look at some of the future activities we will be undertaking with these data sets. I'm going to hand you over to Kevin now, who's going to take us through the objectives of the data. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, it's perhaps worth spending a few moments uh, at the beginning of today's session to think about what it is we're trying to achieve and, and how this data can be used. And I think. This data is particularly exciting and it's got a number of different uses and institutions can be applied in different ways and at different times. I think though the particular uh, specific use we can consider today is about how best can institutions strengthen and, and widen the dialogue between themselves and the wide range of other local partners in the context of not just local enterprise partnerships, but also the, the emerging combined authorities and the local authorities which exist within them. And I think within that, there's an element of how do we ensure that those other partners know what they need to know about the contribution of, of the, 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 the higher education sector, particularly in the context of working towards these new strategic economic plans. So this data provides a lot of facts and figures, given a real indication of the scale and the, uh, the impact that, that our institutions have in working towards those plans. But of course, universities don't act solely uh, within local enterprise partnerships area. Um, they work globally and, of course, nationally. So the data is really useful, and, and it helps institutions and other local partners to think about where are the opportunities for the right kinds of collaboration? How can we, how do we compare our performance and impact against other areas? And one impact, one potential use of that, of course, could be: can we pair up? Can we work together? Can we build scale and impact? And this data helps provide some of the evidence to do that. Now, of course, many local partners will be particularly interested in 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 in, in, in what they see as access to higher education. Uh, and they'll, they'll want to know, you know, in the context of tuition fees and all of the public debates in that area, uh, what, what impact is that having on ensuring that as many people as possible from different backgrounds and different communities and communities of interest are, are benefiting from higher education? And I think that will be of particular importance to many of the other local partners. And finally, of course, uh, in the context of the way in which funding for local growth is evolving fairly quickly, we'll be looking to see how we can use this data to, to build what many people within central departments of government talk about credibility, you know, building an, an, an intervention logic. So 
hopefully in those two minutes, Lizzie, I'm trying to identify what it is we're trying to do today. A little bit later, perhaps we look at why. What, why is it important for you, the institute, higher education institutions, uh, and why now? So I, what I want to do now is going to pass you over to Sam, who's going to talk us through all of this rich data. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so first of all, I'll show you where you can find the data. So the local profiles data can be accessed from the HEFQ website. Uh, we will email you the link after the, uh, after the webinar so you can take a look at the data yourself. Um, when you click on the link for HE and local growth, you'll be taken to this front page. Um, on the front page, you can see uh, select the level of geography that you're interested in. That's LEP or region. And then in the drop-down list, you can select the actual LEP or region whose data you want to view. Um, there's a lot of data in this publication, and to navigate through it, you'll need to click on the ribbon at the top, numbered from 1A to 5B. There is a contents page to show you what data are displayed on each page. The first five pages cover student data, so the number of students in the let ball region, student characteristics such as age and ethnicity, what subjects they are studying, and where students come from. The next four pages are based on uh, data from the Destination of Leavers from Higher Education survey, looking at the employment type and location of graduates from higher education. Um, pages 3A and 3B show data from the Higher Education Business and Community Interaction Survey, which asks HEIs to quantify their interactions with businesses in the community. The final pages include institutions' financial data, such as grants and tuition fees, and uh, the next two pages are performance indicators, such as non-continuation and low participation. So um, before I show you the data, I need to make you aware of a few things. So some of the boundaries of the LEPs overlap with one another. Um, you can see these overlapping areas highlighted in orange on the map. If an institution or campus uh, of an institution is located in one of these orange overlapping areas, then they will appear in the data for both LEPs. This means that you can't simply sum the data to get a total across several different LEPs, as you may be counting the same student, the same grant, etc., uh, twice. Another thing to be aware of is that some of the data show HEIs and FECs combined. Some show data for HEIs only, as the HEIs complete the particular data return. And some pages can be filtered to show data for either HEIs or FECs. But this should all be made clear in the titles on each page. Right, I'm about to show you a, a subset of the data. We'll be looking at some of the pages showing student characteristics, data from the Higher Education Business and Community Interaction Survey, and data from the Destination of Leavers from Higher Education Survey. It's also interesting to see how some of these data can be compared to the Hefke Cold Spots maps, so I'll go through some of those links as well. Each page has a map showing the area you have selected in the top right-hand corner, with HEIs in blue and FECs in orange. There is also a filter to change which area you're seeing the data for. If you change the area that you're looking for at, on any page, the selection will be reflected on all pages. This is the first data page in the publication and shows how many students there are in the selected LEP, in this case, Greater Birmingham and Solihull. The students are split between those taught at HEIs, those registered at HEIs but taught at FECs, those registered and taught at FECs, and those taught at HE at alternative providers. The data from the most recent year, 2012-13, is used for the pie chart and the legend to the right. And if you hover over either a part of the pie chart or a part of the legend, the relevant parts of the tables will be highlighted to show you where the data has come from. So you can see there, by hovering over the HEI registered FEC, FEC taught section, this highlights the relevant figure in the table above and the relevant segment of the pie chart. This page is one of two showing data from the Higher Education Business and Community Interaction Survey. There is a lot of different data displayed here. The bar charts show how much income was generated by HEIs through interactions and with businesses of different sizes in 2012-13 in different areas of business such as contract research and consultancy, etc. In addition to these is the, um, the table underneath showing the number and type of interactions HEIs in the areas have had with businesses in the community. So over all the LEPs, the, varies, uh, the values vary hugely. Um, and using these data, we can see that excluding London, who uh, have far more institutions than any other LEP, that the Oxfordshire LEP has the highest overall values of business and community interactions with £219 million, compared to the Marches, Gloucestershire and Cornwall LEPs, who all have £3 million or less. The HEBSI data can be a powerful tool, but some elements of the survey within the number of interactions are not always easy for HEIs to record. 
in particular, the number of attendees at different events. So this should be taken into account when analyzing the data. So the next uh, couple of pages I'm going to show you are from the, uh, the destination of leavers from higher education survey. And these show you where graduates from HGIs of a given area, so in this case we've got the Solent, um, where they are now employed six months after graduating and in which industries. The page on the left hand side tells us what graduates from HEIs in the selected LEP are doing six months after graduating. It shows the percentage in work, undertaking further study, working and studying, unemployed and other. It also shows in the bar chart below in which, in which regions, including Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales, these graduates from HEIs in the Solent LEP are now employed. The page on the right hand side shows which industries those graduates are employed in and how they compare to the national average. These data are similar to the cold spots data on student mobility as they too use the destination of leavers from higher education survey to track student mobility between areas and industries. They do however use a slightly different population of students to the cold spots data so the results will not be identical. To move between the local profiles data and the cold spots data on student mobility you can follow the link underneath the page. The regional profiles of HE 2009-10, which was published by Hefke in 2012, contain the same data as in this publication, but only at regional level. Comparing the 2009-10 data with these 2012-13 data, we can see that across all regions, the percentage of graduates employed has gone up, the percentage unemployed has gone down, and the percentage in further study has also gone down. I'm now going to hand back over to Kevin, who's going to explore some of the commonly asked questions around this data set and the subject of higher education and local growth Here's more Simon. generally. Um, give me one second. Okay. The big question, of course, is why now? Why is Hesky releasing this data at this moment in time? And I think there's two answers. One is this kind of data should be relevant all the time. It should be the kind of data that both institutions and local partners should be examining on a regular basis to understand the contribution of the sector uh, to, to, to the local economy and, and wider beyond. But what are the specific um, specific circumstances at the moment? Well, for, you know, since the, the creation of the coalition and government in 2010, there's been a, a gradual, well, a strong debate and a gradual trend towards different forms of localism or devolution, whichever form you, you know, term you, you, you prefer. Um, and, and that's been gathering pace over a period of time. And I think the impact of the, the, the vote and the, ref, uh, the referendum in Scotland and the vow that was made by the main political parties, I think has added some real impetus to this to debate now. And over the next few months and following the next election, there'll be very significant and detailed debate within the Scotland Bill, but importantly, what implications will that have upon policies and institutions a across England? Um, I think that will be a real, a real tough debate, and, and it's important that the sector understands its contribution and facts and figures. Um, specifically, local enterprise partnerships uh, in the summer gone were awarded significant sums through the Local Growth Fund, and I think it was very both pleasing and positive to see that the universities and uh, other institutions uh, in many parts of England benefited very positively uh, from those investments. And those enterprise partnerships now are now in the process of putting together the proposals for local growth fund round two. So really opportune time to bring forward hard data. And those partnerships, of course, and it's something I've got a particular interest in, are also working very closely now to firm up the proposals for the use of the European Structural Investment Funds. So again, another timely opportunity for this data to be brought forward. Okay, the obvious question, well, what's that got to do with us? What's that got to do with uh, higher education institutions? Well, you know, some people would say, well, particularly for universities and colleges, you know, for the foreseeable future, the large majority of, of, of resources and income will continue to come from sources which are either controlled or directed or, or funded by national agencies such as HEFKE and research councils and wider refield uh, from the European Union through the New Horizon 2020 program. And I think that's very much understood. But I think, I think what is emerging quite strongly now is a view that through time, increasingly institutions 
will be able to contribute to and benefit from sources of funding which are managed and directed at the local level. Uh, and, and I think that, and that, that isn't to say one source of funding is more important than another. I think it's to say the funding mix will become more complex and institutions need to be thinking about both, both forms. Because, well, does, in simple terms, does that mean that this funding is just simply replacing the funds which many institutions used to benefit from from the regional development agencies? And I think the answer to that is, well, only to a, a certain extent. I think what we're, we're now seeing is, is a, as sort of the implications of the Lord Hasseltine report, no stone unturned, increasingly become to be adopted by the main political parties and thereafter by the, the departments and agencies of government. We're not just seeing that the scale of that funding from uh, its current level of about £2 billion per annum, which may, uh, depending upon resources of course, may improve to around £6 billion, but of course new types of relationships with, with central departments, more flexibility, the, the opportunity to use funds for different sort of funds for different activities is, is also coming to bear. So in, in that context, I don't think this is something which is you know, politically controversial. I think all of the main political parties have, have, have signed up uh, to deliver greater resources and in, uh, influence for funding for local growth. So it'll be, after the election, it'll be a case of not if, but how much and by when. Um, Nobody in town, split across the whole 39 local partnership areas, doesn't seem that much. But as I've said, it, it, you know, there is the, a stated political intention to move that to up to £6 billion. Um, and that, of course, then becomes for many, many institutions a, a much more important uh, question to consider. Um, I think it's a really important time, and I think it is something that all institutions need to consider. And it's not something about should we do this or should we concentrate on excellence and research and teaching. I think that, that debate is very much a false debate. And I think it's, it's both parts of that which need to be brought forward. So in that context then, wh wh why is this data needed? Well, someone who's recently uh, moved to Hefke from uh, a, lo a local uh, and council environment and then working within central departments, I think it's fair to say that many partners outside the higher education sector find it difficult to understand not just what universities do and how they do it, but how much of it they do and, and how it contributes to local economic priorities. And I think by bringing this forward now, it ensures that we have a much stronger and, and, and robust debate, especially now that these local enterprise partnerships are just that, the partnerships. Perhaps in like previous um, uh, periods where we had what were the government office for the regions and the regional development agencies, in some respects they, they acted as a, a referee or a judge. And of course it, and now through the new partnership uh, environment, the emphasis is about reaching consensus. And the more we provide better data, and quality data that's relevant to all of the partners, the better that, that consensus can be. Okay, so what's the difference between this, this data, and I think Sam mentioned earlier, or was mentioned earlier in the presentation, that this builds upon the Cold Spots database. I think it does very much so, and I think the, the addition of the, the, in the acronym terms, the, the HEPSI survey, the Business Green Interaction Survey, had some real genuine rich data about the scale of economic contribution. And that's around collaborative research, contact research. And this is the kind of information that particularly the business partners or local enterprise partnerships would be really interested in. So how much, what value, what kinds of collaborative research and contact research and how many businesses have been uh, developed or spun out of universities. Really rich source of data that many enterprise partners would be banging on the door for universities. And I think that's the real added value here. So with that, I want to pass back to my colleague Lizzie, who has got her finger on the button, ready to go. 
Thanks very much, Kevin. That was really, really interesting to hear. So I just wanted to um, move on to talk a little bit about what our upcoming plans might be with both this and the Call Spots data sets. And the first thing to say about this is that we really are very keen to get your feedback about both the Cold Spots data sets and the local profile data sets, as this will help to inform and shape our future work. So what do you think of these data? How useful are these data? Will it have an impact on what you do? Um, and we would strongly encourage you to uh, email your feedback to the HE data map address, which you can hopefully see on, see on the screen. Moving into 2015, um, we are looking into developing some focused events, and your feedback will help inform how we might go about that. We may also look at releasing more data sets in the future if the feedback suggests that this might be of help to the sector. So I'll just finish by providing you some useful links and addresses for you so that you can access these data and today's presentation easily. Local profiles data will be live in about four minutes, I believe. <laughs> so you should be able to access it from the address on the screen, but we'll email this to you afterwards. The local pro um, we will also be uploading this presentation to, onto our HEFCU YouTube channel, and you should be able to access this within the next few days. Um, and just the HE data maps address again in case you have any questions or feedback. So, um, do we have any questions? That's the few that we've received. First question, um, and if they don't mind me saying, it's from a John Liddell. Um, is the income from business related to institutions in the LEP or businesses? So uh, the data is from HEIs in the LEP rather than businesses in the LEP and can cover businesses from anywhere in the country or world. So it's, it's, it's all the HEIs, um, they're not the, not the businesses. Okay, and we've got another question here from a, oh, sorry, um, from Sarah. Um, and it says, I've seen that data that identifies 10% of employers have an apprentice. Is there a percentage of how many employers have graduates? Um, no, we don't have that um, percentage, but we do have the percentage of graduates from HEIs in each LEP or region who find employment, uh, the industry that they find employment in, and the location of their employment. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> Sorry, I'm pulling these questions up now for you. So we have a question here from uh, Katrina Woodward, who has asked, um, graduates into jobs has increased. Are these figures based on graduate level jobs? Um, no, they aren't, because we, we just take all employment. Um, we do have um, some way of putting graduate jobs on there, but um, we don't probably trust it enough to, to include it, so we haven't done that. Sorry, I'm just pulling up one more question. <laughs> when you say um, HEI data, are you including FEC HE FEC data? Um, no, we aren't. So in the in the Delhi survey, it's just students who are registered at HEIs and taught at HEIs. Um, but in the other data, it's where they're registered um, at HEIs and taught at FECs. So. Um, but obviously the HEPC data is only HEIs, um, performance indicator data is only HEIs, and then for the Delhi it's those registered at HEIs and taught at HEIs. But then the, the, the student data pages all include FECs. Any 
Um, so uh, we have a question, do we plan to update the maps on an annual basis? Um, and I think the answer there is we certainly hope to do that um, and it will you know, depend on feedback that we receive, but yes, that is certainly the plan. Is data available to download in Excel format? Yes, I've, um, I've created a, an Excel spreadsheet with all the, all the data, so there's a, a sheet for each page that you can just download the data that's gone into, into the visualization there. I assume there are no IP issues with sharing the data with other partners? No, so this can, uh, this can go to anyone on the web, um, share it with whoever, whoever can find interest in it, really. Right. I think hopefully, oh no, one more question, sorry. So does the data related to graduates from the region in question, or is it graduates studying at HEIs in the region in question? Um, so we have both. So there are uh, four pages on, on the destinations data. So two of them are related to um, students who um, lived in that region or LEP, and then the other two are based on students who studied in that LEP. So you can look at both. Okay, I think we've hopefully addressed the majority of questions. If any more come through, we will um, be sure to answer them. We're going to send a follow-up email to everybody, and we'll put all the questions and answers within that follow-up email. So that just leaves me to say um, thank you to JISC, thank you to Sam, thank you to Kevin, and most importantly, thank you to all of you who've attended today. Um, we hope you enjoyed it, and goodbye. <laughs>